This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 231 of The Real Word. Word is up. All right, Nicole, we, yes. I'm not ready. I'm, gonna, I knew I'm you going to admit gonna be ready. it. I'm not ready for the replacement of the marketeer, I but love we're not going to do a marketeer. We're leaving last week as the last marketeer ever, which was the Inman Innovator Award. And by the way, tell me more. Over Ask. Eric, yeah. the broke agent. What is he? Is he like Matt Leonetti? They are campaigning so hard campa- to win this to thing. Who? Just like who do you campaign to? In their podcast on Overass, they're doing it. What do you? Like, are they sending gifts? We could send a, gifts every time it comes up. Who do we need to send gifts to? They're now both speaking on a panel. They are. I've never seen anybody suck up harder to Inman than what the broke agent. And what Matt well, and Eddie are doing. Okay, right the now. problem is though is that on our last podcast you said that because we didn't suck up enough, it's because we got that's why and we got so, second place. And so they're taking that advice. They're, yes. they're already doing a victory lap. They a think, victory lap. Yeah, they think they're gonna win this thing. Are you? I I haven't you seen any victory. I haven't seen any victory laps. Maybe, the, I guess I'm just not, I haven't been involved. In the comments, who shows better? Let's just go there. The wow. real word or over ass. Let's start a little internal bam debate. Is the real word this show? Mm-hmm. Yes, better. See the um, what? Th- that is a script. You say yes. You want someone to, to yeah. say yes back. You so do I'll that on your listing here. presentation. You talk like, and I'll just are nod you ready? My head. Are you ready to sell your home are you today? Ready to sell. <laughs> so, uh, is it the real word this show, or is it over ask with? No, no. All right, uh, th- they are just t- complete. Sucking up to Inman right now. So it they're is going gross. to Inman. They're going to. They're going to Vegas. They're going. They're on. I a think panel. they're going to be like br- bringing a flag. A flag. You know, an Inman flag. An Inman flag. A- and they're just going to be completely. Are you bringing a flag? I'll bring a Bam flag, maybe. Bam. I'm not going. Oh, I might go. I'm. I'm fifty fifty. Inman. Should I go or are we going to win here? What, what's the? Oh what's my the lord. Deal? Anyways. Anyway. All right, CNBC, so racket number a, one. So much for a quick show. Yeah, quick show today. That's all over with. Well, now. I've got, we do have a third segment, but it's more in relation to upcoming. So we're not launching that new segment, but. Hmm. but because you weren't ready. Uh, not I true. I knew you weren't going to be ready. Not true. Racket I, number one, Nicole White. She is the biggest racket <laughs> of all time. <laughs> racket. Home builder sentiment <laughs> plunges in July as buyers pull back. This is. CNBC, but this is according to a survey from National Association of Home Builders. Mm -hmm. So, Nicole, the confidence among builders Mm -hmm. in the nation's single family housing market fell in July to the lowest level since the start of the pandemic, but it's worse. It's the lowest level, lowest single month drop in the 37 year history history of this particular with the exception of april 2020 home builder housing market Mm -hmm. index okay so they're surveyed every single month home Mm -hmm. builders on their sentiment their feelings on the market this last month in july was the lowest drop Mm -hmm. in 37 years except for april 2020 for one month which it dropped 30 points we dropped only 12 points this month but it's the largest decline since that time mm-hmm. all right any rating above 50 on the index is still considered positive we're at 55 right now yep. but sentiment has now fallen 24 points since march so hmm. we didn't take the 30 or no the, the um 42 point drop that we saw in one month in april 2020 that's understandable but we have just over half of that since march we've fallen for mm-hmm. how, how home builders feel yep this is location based too, Nicole. So very much location in the, based. In the Northeast, builder sentiment on a three month moving average fell um, six points to 65. So Northeast are still 65 We're above still, the national average. Which doesn't surprise me. Uh, Midwest sentiment dropped four points to 52. Sentiment in the South fell eight points to 70. 70. And the West saw the largest decline, falling 12 points to 62. I will tell you right now. Tell me right now. That I was just in Naples Florida. for. Couple of days. Oh, I didn't even realize it was that long. It was like a day and a half. I feel like it was a couple hours. It was a day and a half. Yeah. And I visited some new construction. I saw that on your story. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I only knew where you were because of your story. So, I went and I asked builders. I asked, you know, people in the in the sales offices. Yeah. I went to probably four or five different okay. communities that are building right now. Yep. Yeah. They don't feel this way. No, I, I, I mean, according to the South, it, it, they're not feeling that they, way. They don't feel this way in, this is very one small micro market, Naples for it. They yeah. don't feel this. Yeah. So I said, 
one of the communities I saw that half the lots was available. I said, so how do how do you get one of these other lots? Well, you don't. Well, you don't. What are you, you keeping them for your, you want them? Yeah. You keeping them? You keeping them? No, we're selling them. Okay, I don't understand. All right, well, we're only releasing four at a time. Yeah. Because every time we release four, there's 30 bids on each one. Right. I said, how much are these lots going for? These lots go for uh, the, the the market price is anywhere from 150 to 300,000. Just for the lot. Just for the lot. Okay. In a, these are less than a quarter acre, about of a quarter course. acre In lots. In a community though, like I'm In sure a, that there's like a pool. HOA, no pool. This no one, nothing. This one was no pool. Okay. So they, they just do irrigation, you know, cutting the grass. Yep. Maintaining the road. Okay. That's it. Okay. So up to three hundred. Is there a man made pond? Up to three hundred. Man- so on the pond view? is, is yeah, yeah. man made pond up okay. to three hundred thousand. Okay. Off the pond, looking at the you know, trees. Whatever. <laughs> yep. Is a hundred and fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. All of these lots have been going for double. Mm-hmm. So the hundred fifties are going for three hundred. The three hundreds so are going doing, for six hundred. So they're doing their own little like supply and demand thing right. so and instead of releasing a hundred and feeling like it was a failure they're doing it well they, they have 30 bids on each one so yeah. they could if they release the there's only about i uh, guarantee 30 you lots a left. majority of their deals are also cash so they're yeah. not necessarily worried about where a rate will be here's i'll tell you what i think they're worried about in a second okay they could release all 30 tomorrow they had about 30 left in mm-hmm. a i think it was 60 or 70 homes this particular community that i'm talking yep. about they could release all 30 tomorrow and they would all sell because okay. they're getting 30 bids on each lot right now and they release them four at a time. They're not worried about clearly the next three years because they're going to be building through this project for, for the next three years. They're not worried about, and they're in a different price point. So the, the average new construction right now is $450,000, which is a hundred thousand more than the median, you know, single family home in the country. Mm-hmm. These, these were higher price points. They're clearly not worried about the market. They don't feel like this survey does. Right. What I think they're worried about is having 30 people now. Well, I want this cabinet. Oh, I want that yeah, counter. Yeah, yeah, I want yeah, this yeah, color. Yeah, what about sure. this? What about yeah. when will you fi- be finished? Right. So they're, man- they're, man- they're managing the expectation up front. I think that's what they're doing. Instead but they're- of, and I like that because there's a lot of builders, especially in the Northeast, because again, we're talking about the fact that we're not really feeling it here either, but we don't really see that much new construction up here. But the last year we have. Yeah. And a lot of the builders were just taking, taking, taking because they haven't been able to build in. I mean, they've been building, but not at this rate. We're now like I had a deal that just closed on Friday. They said that it was going to take nine months. It took it took 24 months yeah. to close. 24 months. And, and so we're just talking about a 600,000 like, you know, dollar ha- like two we, years. We are seeing and builders with the uncertainty of when am I going to be able to get labor? When am I going to be able to get materials? Materials is you the know, most. Yeah. All of these different situations are putting different timelines out. We're seeing some some deals locally and, and maybe you are too in the comments that people are just backing out because of those timelines as of well of course so th- down here in like if you're in a market like what i'm talking about in south florida yeah with these big national builders or texas or, or even or north I, though. I mean i have a, we have a few sellers up here that are moving down to like south carolina north carolina right. and their builders are like they're the, the, they're flying down there to make decisions regularly but, but my point is about the builders that maybe like you're talking about 24 months and these national builders that are doing it at scale, they're not in the 24 month situation. When they say nine months, it's nine months. Now it used to be six months for some of these guys and now it's nine. So that there is a little bit of a delay, but they are, this is a, this is a a, a manufacturing machine on like just they probably pre-bought wood months ago. It it is well oiled and they've got it figured out and they know their timelines but they're not. And so this is South Florida. I don't know about Arizona. If you're in that market, love to hear from you. They, they said the West, right? Mm-hmm. So is that California or, or some of these other markets? Are you seeing buyers say, wait a minute, I'm worried. I need to get all of this under contract. If they were worried in this South Florida community that I'm talking about, like CNBC is saying, or, or the, I'm sorry, the National Home Builders Association is saying the sentiment overall across the country is, we're worried right now as builders, we don't see a bright future. You would think that a builder who is maybe, you know, cash strapped because a right. lot of builders are would say, I got to get all these sell, under contract sell, sell, right sell, now. Sell. I got to get these deposits. Yeah. I got to get this done. 
some of these national, they're, they're maybe not cash strapped, whatever. I, I mentioned it earlier. Another interesting um, piece piece of data for, for us as agents, teams, brokerage community to know mm -hmm. is that the price of a newly built home in May was $449,000. So about four fifty. dollars The median sale price across the country is about three fifty. dollars So it's about $100,000 more to get a newly built single family home. Yep. That's why you keep seeing these you know, resales continue to go up in right. price. That was up 15% from a year ago, and this may change in coming months, so it may go up even more. Yeah. Another sign of a softening market, 13% of builders in the HMI survey reported reducing home prices in the past month to bolster sales or limit cancellations. So hmm. maybe we see that number drop, okay? This is according to Jerry. They'll get them on, they'll get them on the back end. I'll get them on the they'll back end. They'll get them on the yeah, back on end. The, on the upgrades. upgrades. Yeah, they'll get them. This is the Karen's, uh, according to the NAHB chairman and home builder in NA Home Builder in Savannah, Georgia. Also, I thought, which w was interesting from Robert Dietz, the NAHB uh, chief economist, National Home Builders um, Association there. Affordability is the greatest challenging uh, challenge facing the housing market. Significant segments, segment, <coughs> segments, 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 segments. Of the home buying population. Wait, that was more fun. Are, are priced out of the market. Significant segments. Segments. Of the home buying population. Yes. When you talk about a $450,000 home being the average single family home across the country. Yeah, most people can't afford that. Right. That are looking for a home yeah. today. And you put interest rates on top of that. It costs a lot to buy a new construct construction home right for now. For sure. Everybody likes new, though. Everybody likes new. <laughs> they want it shiny. Everybody likes... Everyone... Yes, everybody likes new. Everyone loves the idea of new. You know what's interesting, though? You know what I would be doing right now? And, 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 and I almost kind of want to do it here. You know, the agents should be having conversations with these buyers. You know, like, obviously, we have, a, we have a, a, a group of agents under our umbrella. So I think it's now time to educate, over-educate the agents on, yeah. on the building process and, and what they can expect because these buyers, they, they, like we're saying, they like new. So buyers still want to buy. I think it's the uncertainty of it where at least if agents could be overqualified in the buying process, it could actually then ease maybe the, the concerns of these buyers, which would then maybe even spark then these builders' sentiments you know, back up to where they feel like they can start building again. But I think it's going to be a very important you know, collaboration between a builder and an agent to really be well informed of the process and what to expect because again I, I think at the end of the day that's the most important right is like managing a buyer's expectations yeah. having them understand the process and if us as agents don't understand the process or what to expect or what the delays could possibly be me as an agent I may even be deterring my buyer from building because I don't even feel comfortable you know as an agent G with the process yeah great what this is such a better show than over ask what a, what a big <laughs> what a big value bomb you just dropped on Eric and Matt's face right there I love it we're campaigning up until we are now we're campaigning. yeah we're gonna be campaigning all the way through yeah as an agent you this is an article we're gonna link it below in the show notes yeah. this is an article that you absolutely should be digesting. Yeah. Okay. This is a study. If you don't, even if you don't go and jump into the, the full survey, just take the bullet points from CNBC as they laid them out. This is one that you absolutely should know. And the, like everything Nicole said, understanding the process. If, if there are sales offices in your community, like I did, mm -hmm. you know, just this past week down in Naples, Go visit them. Ask a bunch of questions. Ask I was, every single question. I was question. asking the little... Do you use your contract or do I use my contract? Like yeah. even things like that. Like that, again, I'm asked all the time from our agents. Like what contract do I... Like if you if you don't even know what contract to use, well, you are going to be pushing your buyer away from that situation because you don't feel comfortable well, with one it. One of the communities I went into, there was a very nice... I want to call her a little old lady, but she was, you know, she, she was, was a little she old was lady. She yeah. was running the sales office. Very nice person. And she was the only one there and beautiful. By the way, Nicole, beautiful sales office. It was like 4,000 square feet. This, this company. Did they build it into like their own house? Like there was Lon like the windows London, you would pick and like London siding. Bay Homes. Uh -huh. If you ever heard of them, look, you'll, you'll enjoy them. Okay. They're building the Ritz Carlton in Estero Bay in uh, north of Naples, yep. but they also build single family homes. They start yep. at like ridiculous prices sure. but anyways yep just asking her a bunch of questions hey 
uh, are, are will they build on other pieces of land? How do they feel about doing that? How do they feel about the future of the market? Where do they see the luxury? Mm -hmm. And she's just giving me her answers from her point of view. Yeah. I want to hear it from her. I want to hear it from the builders in the community. I want to hear it from, you know, the when there's traditional agents. She wasn't a traditional agent, but traditional agents that are working in these sales offices. If there's an agent on the property, I want to stop and ask them questions. As an agent, you should be collecting this data mm -hmm. because there will be a question that comes up mm -hmm. in your very near future of course. where you can pull from this right. and help educate somebody about the Especially cuz inventory is not going to all of a sudden start like booming. Like right. there is you are going to have a buyer that is going to question you about, "Do you think building is the right move for me?" And if you don't feel comfortable with it, you know, you may misguide that buyer into believing that it's not the right move but only because of your own insecurity so in the comments in your market what are you seeing with home builder confidence the new developments that are happening in your area are they healthy are you know is traffic slowing down love to know from yeah. you yeah all right racket number two racket number two jimmy burge's article still doing a great job producing content jimmy shout out to you five truths every agent should know about shifting markets you can find this on these Inman. are going to be we're, there's going to be a few bombs dropped in this article yeah some he's, bombs he's, he's dropping some bombs we'll link this up it's an inman article uh but we'll break it down for you right now in case you got the paywall number one people want to deny a change is happening so Regardless of if you think prices are going to go up, down, stay flat, you know, if you're like me and Dave Ramsey, you think that the rate of appreciation is going to slow down, but that home values we'll are going to continue rise. to go yep. up over these next few years. But no matter which way you slice it, change is happening. It is happening. We are, we've seen far less under contracts over the last 30 days than we saw 12 months ago. I mean, we're seeing a far less people going to open houses than we did yeah, in, two weeks ago. Interestingly enough, a year ago, there were no open houses because homes were selling so fast yep. and, and some people, you know, still had concerns about the health crisis. Yep. Now you have open houses and you would think that there's just well, people that want to collect your, data. It's 100% part of your marketing strategy now. And yeah. it's, yeah, yeah. I'd love to hear from you guys. Are, are open houses very active for you? Or are they surprisingly not as active? Right. Love to know that. All yeah. right. So people want to deny changes happening. Um, the act of adjusting earlier than others provides you the ability to serve your clients better and 100%. to increase market share. So absolutely, you, you've got to adjust now. You've got to make these little incremental moves, whether that's, okay, I'm spending on something that doesn't work, but I know this is working. Let me double down over here. Mm -hmm. Let me make that key... We're going to invest into the shift. That may not be right for your business where you're at right now. It might be, let me take a step back, train a VA. Mm -hmm. You can use the link for Virtue Desk down below if you're gonna train a VA there it is. on how to do that. It might be to you know, go and find some more leads to yep. build that strong database, yep. whatever it is for you. Or just pick up the damn phone. You've got to make the adjustments yes. to react. Definitely just pick up the phone is something everybody should do. All right. Number two, ego is going to kill a lot of businesses. A lot of businesses. I mean, this is. This actually should be number one. This should be number one because there's a lot of agents that got into the business the last mm -hmm. two to three years and yep. don't know any other market. And all of a sudden, because they sold 25 homes a year and they're at 50, 60, 70 sales, they think they know everything in the business. Right. They think they've seen it all. Right. Right. You have. Or haven't. they were on the listing side for the first time during this market and they're like, woo woo, listings are easy. Yeah. I mean, for days over. You and I have both been in this business in the sales side over a decade. Yeah. I've been in real estate 20 years, which yep. is crazy, mm -hmm. right? I'm not even but, 20 years old. So. Right. And Nicole's, you know, she's just turned 19. Forever. So she started doing real estate when nine. she was nine. Nine. We still know so little in comparison to some of the vets in this oh, business. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and we so, haven't even seen all the ups. We haven't even seen interest rates at 18, right. 20%. Always be a learner. Yeah. Study the freaking industry. Know what's going on. Be somebody who's willing to like absorb when you're around a 30, 35 year vet. Yeah. Just because they're maybe not as active as you are right now in your business They've seen things that you haven't. Right. And it's really valuable, the information that they hold. Yeah. And I would be just asking them when I'm around those types of people, yeah. when I get a chance to mastermind with the best of the best or the most experienced, yeah. 
I would be asking a million questions yeah. and collecting that data. Or even if you're in the middle of a deal with one of them, you know, don't be, Absolute. don't become friends, don't snub it. Or if, even if you ha- see, even if you have been in the, the business for even two years and you're now working with somebody new, like there's Here, just, there's just, you can't. Here's uh, where else ego hurts you. Yeah. I don't like this. Yeah. I don't like the way that thumbnail looks. I don't like the way that video was edited. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like want to work on this day. I don't like that piece of mail. Yeah. Uh, I don't like that glossy pamphlet. I don't like that listing. P- Wait a minute. You've done 50 deals in your life. What you like personally doesn't matter. You don't have enough experience to comment on what you like actually mattering. Put the video out and test it and let the market tell you what works and what doesn't. What the market likes is what matters. What you like has no bearing on what's going on in the world whatsoever, especially if you're a two to three year agent. Ooh, we got our bomb. I know. I, yeah, that's why I'm putting it up. Bomb. Bomb. We're dropping go. the bomb. All right. Mark, so drop it. The mark that, number, mark number that three. stamp, Bobby. The, he felt good about it. He was raising inf- his eyebrows. The influence around you will be amplified. Okay. Times of change amplify the influence of those around you. This can be explained by the fact that change creates uncertainty and uncertainty creates an environment where we search for ways to adapt to the change. The question is not whether you, whether those around you will influence you or not. The question is whether you are surrounded by a group of people that will influence you in a positive manner or a negative manner. Love we kind of just got into this I, right? yeah. with the, you know, like get around these vets, like get the information. Well, again, get the data. E- but, you, but again, even, even what we were talking about before with builders, like get yeah. the, get the scoop instead Go of just talk re- to people, instead of regurgitating the headlines, like find out the truths again, continue to build the relationship so that when you are speaking, you're speaking and the get, truth. get around the right people. If you're working yeah. this business alone, I really, no more negative Nellie. I, I feel it's if you're working go. the business alone, I feel bad for you. Like, you know, you gotta be, part of some kind of community, you're going to grow so much faster. I mean, I'm not going to just push it towards a team, but some type of community, whether that's a coaching community, a mastermind, something where they're or, or going even, to But even just the right team you. though, because if you're right in a team, team where it's always yeah, negative absolutely. and it's downer and they're not supporting yeah. you, I mean, that team can be detrimental listen, too. Listen, if you're only in your own head every single day in this business, you're only going to be as good as the, the, the thoughts be. that are coming into your head. Horrible. And then if, by surrounding on the other side, surrounding yourself with people, you got to surround yourself with the right people because it's, it's real easy in this business, in this world Mm -hmm. to be average and ordinary because there's a whole bunch of average and ordinary folks out there. Right. So get around people that are going for more, that are getting better, that are striving to do something with their lives. Number four, in times of change, there is a flight to safety. I say this all the time. You're going to see a whole bunch of, of you're going to see a whole bunch of agents get out of the business because that's the safest move for them to go yeah. pick up a job because they're not doing any business. And yeah. then you're going to see a whole bunch of agents that realize, okay, teams have all the market share in my community mm-hmm. and I need to fly over to safety. safety. I need to go join the number one team in my market because they've got the leads, they've got the training, they've mm-hmm. got the support where I yep. can get my time back and invest it into my clients. Go deep onto my database, really do something special mm-hmm. for my past clients. So Absolutely, there's going to be a time for safety. So if you're building right now a team, use this to your advantage. If you're feeling uncertain, know that, hey, maybe I need to, going back to number two or three, drop the ego. Right, that's number two. And jump into a place that can really you're like, you're like, you're get like, my best abilities. You're like Tony Robbins today. I'm, a, I'm feeling it today. Right? Tony. I feel it. It's like, wow. I feel like I need a couch. Uh, okay, so... The, his other point here yep. would be to share testimonials from past clients. Basically, he's taking it from the client angle. Client, yep. I was taking it from the agent angle. Yep. So when you're attracting clients, what do they want? Right now, they're actually going to interview people. Yep. Where's the safest opportunity for me to get this, right. this Who sale? Who knows what's so going on? Share those testimonials of yep. listings that you've sold. Right. Document on IG stories. If you're out there working the business every day yeah. not documenting this, I'm are you insane? I Nicole, am you are insane. I am insane. You're, you're, you're absolutely insane. insane. Why are you not documenting? Actually, Nicole, you're doing a great job documenting the social redesign. You um, can vote social redesign on Instagram. She's doing a whole bunch of 
you know, this or that as she builds out a flip for a local charity here. So follow that. Share the stories of how you helped clients overcome obstacles that led to successful closings, record and share videos, explain the current market statistics. Love Mm -hmm. it. All right. Number five, the players. The players. I love that word. Uh, Well, they don't say play. They say players. Players. If they did players, we would They say players. Players. So players. Players. Are separated from the pretenders. I love it. Are you a player? Player. Don't be a player hater. It's, it's so funny. So I, I, um, I, I, I remember my. I had a boyfriend in high school, and he was a few years ahead of me. And just one. Well, this was just this 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 specific year, yeah. Um, and he graduated, and in his, you know, like you could do like a little like um, senior thing, yeah. yeah. Like you could like thank everybody, whatever. The best quote his of all time. His quote was, "Can't change a player's game in the ninth inning," and I remember being like. WTF? Yeah. Yeah, he was he was cheating on you the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Well, that didn't last. Did, clearly not. Not. No. But anyway. Uh, okay. Um, you I know what? <laughs> my quote <laughs> my quote actually relates to this more than your yours I'm, is just about, you know, my cheating on girls. My 16 year old. My quote relates love. to players are separated from the pretenders. My yes. senior yearbook quote relates to this much more. I will never be with those cold or timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat love that quote and this is what he's talking about here Mm -hmm. like you know if you're a pretender it means you're not in the arena you don't know victory you don't know defeat you don't know yeah you don't know the game the whole this whole one through five are all highly related yeah yeah so if if you've been a pretender the last few years it's not too late to become a player but you got to get in the game you got to start making your calls you got to get your hands dirty you got to have great you got to do the hard work you got to be accountable you got to work you got to change the activities that you've been doing the last two or three years to get more capacity that might mean you've got to start investing in your health a little bit so you can do more so you can be more i am feeling a little tony you are super tony enough of this nonsense we'll link it down below if if you want to check it out this this is i i think Really important though, Very the important. mindset of the agent over the next, you know, 18 months. I do have to say though, too, I, I, I wouldn't all of a sudden be like crazy, like, d- don't go crazy, like, just, just take the steps, take t- the steps. Yeah, this absolutely. isn't supposed to be a scary time. It doesn't need to be in, a scary time. In investing in you so take you can actually steps. do more. Yeah. And then, um, all right, vote for the real word. As we sign off here. Well, there's no voting, but no, just, <laughs> yeah, in the comments, how much more you like this show than over us. I want to get a and little. tag in men. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to get, a, yeah, tag in men on all those. I want to get a little bit of a, you know, a shot across the the bay over at, like we're pirates. What? The bow. The bay. The bay? The what bow. What are you talking about? Shot across the bow and the about? bay over to the over ass boat. I want to sink the ship. Sink the ship. Battleship. With, with we have all these bombs. We we, have, we're drop bombs. They have nothing. They have nothing, they have by the nothing. way. They, they every no, time they do their podcast, it looks no like gadgets. they are in a jail cell. I mean, well, I'll be honest though. You and I, because because they're not local to each other, I I always prefer being next to you. But even when we are not local, our pod looks way better than theirs. So it all comes down to, to aesthetic. No, but that is check aesthetic. We've got them there. Mm-hmm. Um, personality i mean eric come on personality yeah. do we have them i mean i don't know maybe i think i do uh, i don't do, know about maybe, you. okay so you've got them maybe it's two to one maybe they're beating <laughs> us two to one on personality how about data yep we've got them there yeah i'll be right? on it yeah how about how about a format to the show we've got them there i mean there's just no question we're so anyways love for, love, love your them. thoughts on we that love, over us. love your thoughts on the home builder stuff yes. and then i'd also love your thoughts on we are launching a new segment, a third segment. We're done with the Marketeer of We're the all Week. Done. We actually innovate this show. We're not like over asking these other shows that never innovate. Never innovate. We innovate all the time. All the time. And we're going to be coming out with a... We even innovate our team so many times that we don't even know what logo we're that's on. That's right. And so, we so we're, we're always getting better every single day. Mm-hmm. And this third segment is going to... You, you mentioned it last week, the P word. It's not going to involve politics, but it's going to involve national news story. So if you're interested in maybe these big trending stories Mm -hmm. and which one of them you should actually be paying attention to as somebody, as a leader in Mm -hmm. your community, as a leader in real estate, 
Would you be interested in that? I'd mm. love your thoughts on should we take that angle on the third segment of this pod? Would that interest yeah. you in any way? So I'd love your comments. But and we're not talking about like like the fact that like Chloe's having a baby, another baby with Tristan, though. Well, that, that is nothing. That's not a national okay. news. What, it what is, is a huge. I don't even know what, what you're story. talking about. Yep. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe you never know. Maybe we'll yep. put in some crap news. All right. Yep. Really appreciate you guys. Keep it real. We'll see you next week. Real word, better than over ask any day of the week. See you guys.